and today is the third uh, edition of the Grease Chronicles. This is a, a vlog, obviously, but I've been uh, posting blogs about my travels cross country in the old benzo running on waste vegetable oil. If you want to check out those blogs, uh, you can find them at Facebook backslash Swift Heart. Um, so I want to get started by welcoming you to uh, Nunez, Georgia. Um, this is Ron's Chicken Shack and I should say we would love to have you come down but it's BYOD. Bring your own degreaser because you're going to need it. This is a 12 volt pump right here and um, what I'm doing is, is I'm pumping preheated veg oil out of this 55 gallon steel drum that has a, uh, a hot water heater, heater element in it, heating the oil. Uh, it's probably heated up to about 150 degrees. The oil that I had put in here had come out of my settling tanks and was really sludgy and nasty, but I let it cook for, you know, overnight uh, for good probably 18 hours and um, and it's essentially boiled off all of the water and all the particulates have dropped down to the bottom so I'm being careful not to draw the, the, the oil off of the bottom of this I'm sort of working my way down from the top and um, I'm transferring this over um, to the hot water heater that's called an apple seed biodiesel processor once I got the oil into about 35 gallons into this like 50, 50 gallon hot water heater, I started the cycle by turning this pump on, it circulates it, and then the, um, uh, the recipe that I use is um, I used for that 35 gallons, I used two gallons of methanol and I used 500 microliters of potassium hydroxide which I measured off on a scale over here. Okie doke. Now the next process is adding the uh, potassium hydroxide. Um, these two chemicals are, you know, the dangerous parts of dealing with biodiesel. The methanol is flammable and the potassium is caustic. So um, be really, really careful. Try not to, you know, definitely have a vented, a vented area and uh, try not to breathe too much of the fumes. Especially the uh, potassium hydroxide will it'll definitely let you know that you don't need to be breathing it because it'll burn you, burn your lungs. Um, keep, keep caps on everything because your chemicals will dissipate if you don't. Okay, definitely use gloves when you're dealing with the potassium hydroxide. Um, caustic, caustic chemicals they will burn. Um, this uh, paper bowl here um, filled full is about the measurement that I need. But to double check that I want to be around 500 micrograms so I'm going to measure it off with the scale. That's 547, so that's close enough. Then I add that to the methanol. Go ahead and get this put the cap back on it.
I'm gonna give that a stir. When this reacts, it heats up. Sometimes it will off gas, but lately I haven't noticed that as much. I don't know why. I've seen it like boil before. It's kind of scary. Okay, I'm going to inject this meth oxide now. I've got my 12 volt uh, pump hooked up to the injection port on the processor. I've got the oil cycling. It's uh, just slightly below 140, but when I add this uh, methanol catalyst, it's going to raise the temperature a little bit. show you the temperature rising. There it is. 139, 140. Okay. Now two hours from now I can turn this pump off. And at that point we'll just let the the uh, the glycerin settle out of the biodiesel which takes you know maybe four or five hours so now that I've drained I just drained off what was on the bottom of this which is the glycerin and there's about five gallons of glycerin on the bottom incidentally you can make soap out of this glycerin uh, so it does have a use um, and uh, I wanted to show you what the glycerin looks like so that you can know when you've got the glycerin out and when you're into the biodiesel um, there is a few gallons that are kind of co-mingled and and those will settle out so basically the darker or the semi-dark oil that's that's kind of co-mingled biodiesel and glycerin you just put that with the glycerin and um, the heavy glycerin will settle out to the bottom and you can eventually get the biodiesel off the top so that shows you how dark that is and then I'll show you what the biodiesel looks like it's a lot more it's, a, it's more of an amber this is the close-up of the um, the difference between the glycerin and the biodiesel the glycerin would be the left bottle the dark one and uh, Obviously the biodiesels the more amber lighter one on the right So this is the final stage where I'm cooking the biodiesel to um, Evaporate off any um, residual methanol um, And if there's any water that's still in there that also will evaporate so I think they call this the drying process um, see showing 100 and about a hundred and uh, 15 and uh, I'm seeing this foam on the top and these you can't see but these little droplets um, are coming up and and I believe that would be the methanol um, so I'm gonna let that cook for an hour or so I've got the flame on fairly low um, just to can just to be economical about the gas propane. This is just one of those tur turkey fire burner bases. 
and that's 55 gallons there I also have another 55 gallons over here heating in the uh, barrel that has the hot water heater element in it same thing oh, you can see the bubbles coming up so I guess I'll keep doing that until the bubbles kind of stop coming um, this is the the pump that I use the the DC 12 volt pump it's a um, 15 gallons per minute um, it's made by a company called Tut Hill T U T H I L L and that works really really good um, it's also great for traveling with because I can just plug it right into my car or hook it to my car battery it has a long cable this is my finished filtering process that's a 10 micron filter okay so basically I wanted to go through um, the the different products that um, that have been created out of this biodiesel process um, this glycerin right here is real thick um, this is the byproduct that uh, we drain off uh, from each batch that settles to the bottom it's heavy it's thick it can be made into soap um, and um, it's also supposedly flammable uh, or it can be used as I guess a, maybe lantern oil I've obviously got uh, lanterns burning these are floating wicks burning these other biodiesels here but I just tried to put some in the in the glycerin and it was a little bit too thick um, this is the uh, the darker amber biodiesel and this has been reacted once so this was reacted with two gallons of uh, methanol and 500 micro uh, liters of potassium hydroxide this was reacted a second time and um, for this reaction I only did one gallon sorry one gallon per 35 gallons this is two gallons per 35 gallons um, one gallon per 35 gallons uh, with about 800 microliters of potassium hydroxide and that gives you a lighter that basically has pulled more of the glycerin out that's why it's lighter um, and this would be the the um, basically this but this is settled for two weeks or maybe three weeks and so any um, suspended glycerin is completely settled out of this one here so um, basically I would say that this biodiesel would be fine for summertime and um, this biodiesel would be more of a between winter and summertime when it's starting to get cold and this biodiesel would be full-on wintertime biodiesel um, the fact that there's so little glycerin or f fat lipid this is all esters left in this um, it would have really good properties for cold weather it wouldn't gel up as fast um, so that's basically it um, I haven't made soap out of this glycerin but I'm going to attempt that sometime soon and hopefully I can put together a video about that so that um, I can demonstrate the use of all of the products involved. All right, thank you. Okay, I wanted this is the uh, the 80 gallons that I've made for Ron um, in this 275 gallon tote, and I've filtered some through this um, this one 10 micron cleanable filter sock. So I'm gonna um, I'm going to. Go ahead and um, fill up the bins. 
because I think she's getting thirsty over there. I'm off. Have a good one, folks. I know that many of you have had a burning question all along in this video and I can read your mind. Yep, you were thinking, what about that sludge? That's right, it is fryer oil so there's food particles. Well, I covered that one too. Is the um, the sludge that remains from the um, you know my my biodiesel process this is all the food particles that settle out of the vegetable oil um, and I mix this with uh, actually I cooked it in this barrel over a fire to get most of the water out of it and then I've added these wood chips um, which soak up the the sludge and um, the really what I need to do is make a um, a compression system that will compress these into like fuel pucks and those can be used for uh, wood stoves um, but that is a project for another day um, for now I'm just gonna put the lid on this barrel and come back to it later <laughs> 